Hey everyone, and welcome back to my vlog. It has been over three months now since I left the ship, which is crazy to me. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't miss that beautiful ship and my community over there. It's just initially hard to transition from life on a ship in West Africa or West Central Africa to life on land. And I've kind of done it so many times, like from ship to shore and back again and back again. It's just, it's always hard. It never really gets easier. Um, because it's just such a unique way of life. And I miss, you know, I miss being with my friends all the time. I miss the patients. I even miss standing in line for food and fire drills, things I never thought I would miss, but I do. Um, but at the same time, it's also been good and I think needed to take a little bit of a step back, to rest and to reflect because as awesome as life is on the ship, it's also crazy and it's nonstop and it's always moving. And it's kind of been nice to just be able to go on walks by myself and not have a curfew and to experience fall again and look I'm wearing a coat like it's so exciting <laughs> so for those of you who are tuning in maybe for the first time I grew up on the ship with my family and then I went to college for four years and then I came back for a year to work as a chaplain in Cameroon and now I'm back here in Seattle where I'm working and also new life update I'm going to be attending Fuller Seminary to get my master's in theology so I'll be starting that while working and staying here and so yeah so while I miss the ship, it's also exciting. Life is happening here and I'm excited about it. Uh, also excited to continue vlogging and sharing patient stories with you. So this week, I'm gonna be sharing the story of Adama. Now Adama was on the ship for quite a few months and during those months, we got to be pretty good friends. But like many of the patients, she didn't actually speak English. She spoke her own tribal language, which in this case was Fufude. And so we got to know each other and become friends without words. And instead we just used the language of consistency, which I think is very powerful. And so, yeah, we became quick friends. He is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. I don't say that lightly. So that's it. I hope that you enjoy the video. Adama agreed that I could share her story and it's a story worth telling. And editing it has made me miss her and the ship all the more. But that's why I come to places like this because coming to the ocean makes me feel a little bit closer to the place I love most in the world. So enjoy the video and I'll see you next time with another vlog. Until then, stay awesome. My name is Stephanie Martin, and I am a mom on the ship of two boys, um, Titus and Ezra. Titus is eight and Ezra is five. And we've been on the ship this time for just a year. But previously, I worked on the Caribbean Mercy for 2004 and 2005, and that's where I met my husband, Tyrone. And then we came back as a married couple in 2008 and 9 on the Africa Mercy, and we were in Liberia. And then we came back in July of 2017 with our family. So it's been really interesting to see all three different um, ways of being on the ship, single, married, and with a family. And this time when I came, I was sort of unclear of how I would be able to work as a primary caregiver and then also a nurse. And I was asked to be the craniofacial team leader. And what that means is that I'm the coordinator for all of the patients that have craniotomies. We had one patient that really stood out. Her name is Adama. I remember the first time I met her in the screening tent and she was quiet and she had a man with her and she did not speak very much and her eyes looked very sad. And um, one of the things that struck me is when the surgeons, when they came up with this plan and they were telling her what, she, what they thought that um, she would look like afterwards and, and explaining the great results that they thought that she would have. There was no expression. A couple days later, Adama came onto the unit and she had a very long intensive surgery. And actually, she was on the ship almost six months. So Adama has a Tessier 13 cleft, which means that um, when she was being formed as a fetus, 
that not everything pulled together. So she had this gap like this. So she had a gap right here, so she really had no nose. It was like an indented, and then there was just skin. Sometimes there can be no skin, and you can actually see into the skull. But this one, hers was a soft tissue only, so she had an indent right here, and so she had an area that, was not, that her brain was not covered, which is why she had to have the craniotomy. And she had a series of complications including multiple infections, and she had some reactions to medications. And um, throughout this whole time, I saw her, and I saw the change in her. And she went from being this quiet, shy, sad woman to my friend. She had seven surgeries and we tried everything to especially get rid of this terrible infection that she had. And there were things that were very painful and she would just sit through it. And we would, I would try my best to make sure that I could ease her pain. But I was so surprised at the way that she would just endure all of it. I Eventually I just saw that she wasn't just this feeble woman but she was a survivor. She was 34 years old and she had this quite large deformity that could have been catastrophic to her because her, ba her brain was uncovered by bone. Um, and she survived in these living conditions and she um, is originally from the Central African Republic and she was living with her husband and in the middle of the night, her village was ransacked and she had to flee and she came to Cameroon as a refugee. And as all of this started to come out, I, my view of her changed so dramatically. And she, she did, wasn't just a patient, but she really ended up being someone that I just adore. No, you wear it. I have bone. You do not. <laughs> yes, if you are not in your bed, wear it. You're in your bed now. You don't have to put it on. But what did she say? She wear it. No, no. yesterday as she as she walked down the gangway it was a day of joy and victory and um, I saw people crying and upset and I know that some of those were tears of joy but for me it just felt so victorious because there were dark days and those dark days for me were in the OR when we realized that the infection had come back or after she had a terrible reaction to a medication. But the day she walked down the gangway, that was a day of victory. When we thought that there were, when we thought that there was no way she would be able to live through all of this, and she did. She walked down that gangway as a person that felt valued and loved. And I love the way that the other nurses loved on her and they really taught her a lot and not just English words of how to count to 10 or say thank you or I'm fine but Adama watched for six months women loving people they taught her how to be a sister how to be a friend how to love on babies and they watched she watched them show Jesus' love and eventually, Adama started to talk about the change that was happening in her and how she had hope. 
And even though she was going back to something that may not be perfect or that may, that may require her to work hard. And even, and she even had less bone in her head than when she first came. She had hope because she had seen and experienced love like she had never before. Adama is that she will remember that she is a child of God and that no matter where she is and no matter um, what her living conditions may be that she is loved and she is loved by God but she is also loved by people and um, just because she was born or she was born with a deformity um, we see her as a perfect creation.